First of all, uh, I thank the organizers for uh, <clears throat> giving me an opportunity to, to speak on fractures of the proximal femur, how to prevent complications, or whether can we prevent them at all. How to go forward? Femoral, ne <coughs> femoral neck fractures, I am confining myself to the transcervical neck fractures of the femur. The incidence of the femoral neck fractures has reached epidemic proportions. We treat about 40 neck fractures in a an year, and hence the requirement to prevent the complications, if at all. In 1935, Speed published a complication rate of 36% in operative treatment of femoral neck fractures. Are we any better today? No, says the recently published meta-analysis report by Kyle. This is uh, study 2006. History and physical examination. Patients complaining of pain after a fall, wherein physical examination and x-rays are inconclusive, are the ones that tax the diagnostic acumen of the surgeon. What are the imaging techniques that we have? We have the x-rays, we have the CT scans, um, and we have the MRI. CT is not as sensitive, but with spiral CT, it is improving. X-ray, message number one, always take X-ray pelvis with both hips. Otherwise, what will happen if we take an isolated X-ray? You could either miss the dislocation on one side or you could miss the fracture on the other. And hence, it is compulsory that you should take X-ray pelvis with both hips. An AP view should be taken with 15 degrees of internal rotation to offset the antiversion. A full-length femur X-ray when you suspect a pathological fracture. A lateral X-ray to demonstrate the amount of posterior comminution. Why should you take an MRI? How does this X-ray look? This X-ray looks perfectly normal. And look, what does the MRI show? It does show an IT fracture. And hence, any, any suspect, suspected pain not settling down, you should, you should ask for an MRI. What is the initial management then? Buckstraction. Everyone was doing this, relative immobilization, pain reduction, reduction of further uh, soft tissue injury, maintenance of reduction and increasing the chances of better reduction. This is what it was supposed to do. However, we do not use it anymore because there is no evidence to suggest that it succeeds in what it was meant to do. Further, in position of flexion and external rotation increases the intercapsular volume and would hopefully reduce the tamponade. Blood supply to the femoral head, more the degree of fracture displacement, more the damage to the blood supply. Intracapsular hematoma will cause a tamponading effect. Early anatomical reduction and internal fixation may restore the blood flow in vessels which may have been obstructed by the displaced fragment. What are the treatment options available then? Non-operative treatments, there is no role for non-operative treatment except when there are severe comorbidities which contraindicate surgery and operative treatment. Surgical timing. Menninger published a report in 1985. The occurrence of AVN was 1.9% in patients operated within the first six hours compared to 19.3% in patients who were delayed. And even today, most centers in the world are not able to operate these fractures within the first six hours. On the contrary, uh, there was another study published by Jain that was in JBJS 2002. He also reported that 15 patients who were treated within the first 12 hours, none of them developed AVN. But there was another contrasting study study by Upadhyay et al., JBJS, 2004. He said that the incidence of AVN is not dependent on the time of surgery. Majority of them were fixed after 48 hours. So where is the truth then? If at all you have to err, you have to err on the safer side of the patient and often better to go by the first two studies rather than this study by Dr. Upadhyay. 
What are the clinical risk factors for DVT? Advanced stage, you're all aware, thromboembolism, obesity, malignant diseases, heart failures, prolonged immobilization, and delay of more than two days of hospitalization. Thromboprophylaxis, we use mechanical prophylaxis pre and post operatively. Low molecular weight heparin for chemoprophylaxis if we anticipate a delay in surgery. Prophylactic antibiotics, first generation kephalosporin is all that we use <clears throat> half an hour before surgery and continued for three doses thereafter. How do you assess the reduction? This, on this point only the complication rate will descend. This is the classical Lovell's method of assessment. Uh, but believe me, we have not been able to duplicate these curves. We have not been able to understand them in spite of taking the textbooks in the operating room because the gentle S curve and the C curve, you just cannot make out on the image intensifies properly. This would be an anatomical reduction on, the, on one side and this would be an under-reduced position and that would be an over-reduced position. And that leads us to the question of garden's alignment index. The, the standard index of acceptable reduction should be 160 over 180. 160 in the AP with 180 in the lateral. This was a case wherein can anyone say whether this was an acceptable reduction or not? Anyone? No, we, we also agreed to that. We, 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 but it is extremely confusing to go on these x-rays whether this reduction is good or not. And in, in such circumstances, it is often better to take a portable x-ray and then decide. So our take-home message number two is that on an image intensifier, if you cannot make out, you take a portable x-ray. Posterior combination of the neck increases the potential for rotational and varus instability. Rotational malalignment, compressive trabeculae not aligned accurately despite alignment of cortices. Independent observers have classified garden differently. Stable, garden 1 and garden 2. Unstable, garden 3 and garden 4. Which garden grade is this? Yes, anyone? This possibly is garden 4. Why do I say so? Because you can see the tip of the trochanter. Tip of the trochanter normally corresponds to the center of the head. And here it is completely displaced. Garden 1 and garden 2 are fixed in situ. We often do a capsule ottoman to relieve the tamponade. <clears throat> garden 3 and garden 4, we attempt reduction and internal fixation. This is an interesting study by Moore. He showed that when the fragments are not anatomically reduced, the actual bony contact at the fracture site is only half as much as it appears on the X-ray. And therefore, there is no such thing as acceptable reduction. We as orthopedic surgeons are fond of calling it acceptable. There is no such thing as acceptable reduction. Either you have the reduction or you have no reduction. Close reduction. Our method is a combination of traction in extension and internal rotation. We do not do a lead butter technique as we feel it is very traumatic. We proceed with open reduction if close reduction fails. Open reductions are often difficult. Do not, do not take them lightly because very often we are not experienced to do open reductions. And you better take the summon the help of someone because the femoral head versions are difficult to judge on the table. What are the contraindications for open reduction then? Poor bone quality, pathological fractures, advanced hip joint diseases, advanced physiological age, and patients with limited life expectancy. How do you do then open reduction? Either a radiolucent table or a, or a fracture table or a non-fracture table. Uh, I often use a, uh, do the open reduction on a fracture table because it is very uh, it is difficult to fix them uh, on the on the C arm without a fracture table. And therefore, I often use the fracture table. I use the Watson Jones approach, and the and the head fragment should be brought to the neck and not the other way around. We follow the criterion laid by Koval and Zuckerman. This is a wonderful criterion. Uh, this, should, this should be the take-home message. Good reduction and no combination. Proceed with fixation. Acceptable reduction and significant combination. You could add other surgical options, like bone grafting, for example. 
unacceptable fracture reduction and minimal combination, then proceed with open reduction. I showed you the case last time. Unacceptable reduction and significant combination, replacement in the elderly. In an younger individual, still try an open reduction and try and fix it with four screws, then three, and try to get the head into valgus if possible. So these are the criteria by, laid down by, Zucker, uh, by Zuckerman, and these we think will come very handy in cases of doubt. Geometry of screw positions is often very important. The first screw must be at the level of the calca and should be central in the lateral. The second one should be in the mid-neck and posterior. Third one should be in the mid-neck and anterior. It should be a parallel configuration. Femoral head fixation geometry. The present data would favor an inverted triangle. In rare cases, or I said cases uh, as per the Zuckerman's criteria, have a significant combination. You can use four screws. This is how it should be. Um, see the see the guide wire and see the position of the guide wire. Three screws fixed here. Good reduction. What are the preferred surgical technique? Distal pin is placed first at the level of the upper border of the lesser trochanter. Entry point must never be below the level of the lesser trochanter. And all guide wires must be put first. There is no question of fixing one screw then passing the second guide wire. Pass all the guide wires at, at one time and then try and fix them. I use a freehand technique despite having guides for um, diamond or triangle patterns. Self-wrapping cannulated screws with reverse cutting flutes and we drill only the outer cortex. Washers may or may not be required. Screw positions must be assessed fluoroscopically because the screw might have cut through into the head. The only thing is tighten the last sc inferior screw last. If you tighten the inferior screw first, there's a possibility that, 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 that the proximal fragment might collapse a little bit into varus. So tighten the inferior screw last. Dynamic compression screws and parallel derotation screw, we only use it for basic cervical fractures, patients with neurological disorders, or sometimes non-unions. Two minutes more. Complications of internal fixations, osteonecrosis, loss of fixations, poor screw fixation, absence of parallelism, poor bone quality, and screw threads at the fracture site. Bad results of nailing, results of bad nailing. Said Watson Jones, I would say bad results of screwing, results of bad screwing. You could see this. This was converted. This again was done percutaneously, but everything gone wrong, and this should be prevented. This was, this was a screw the, that was passed when the hip was stiff. Because the hip couldn't break, the fracture broke. This was another patient that fell. This was the third one, wherein everything failed. Handle with care. These patients are osteoporotic. This patient underwent a gynecological surgery and they broke her hip when they came out. And this is osteonecrosis due to virus reduction in an young patient. Non-union. Yeah, this is the this is what the Rockwood and Green is proposing now to fix the calcar fragment with a transfer screw. But I have not done this because I do not accept that there could be a parallel screw versus a cross screw acting together. What are the pearls then? Compression of the fracture, cortical support of the implants in a osteoporotic bone, angle of guide wire, pilot hole may be expanded slightly, pitfalls, internal fixation in a patient whom stable fracture cannot be achieved, accepting non-anatomical position. Dissection of the neck should not cross the superior aspect of the neck, failure to di diagnose the instability and unrecognized femoral head perforations. Indications for prosthetic replacements, you all know, this was the one that was operated, fixed bipolar, 2003, this, uh, this was the x-ray. This is an Austin Moore pin that everyone was doing, and this landed up with a protrusio. This was another patient, young patient, who had a pathological tumor operated, fixed with a bipolar. This was another patient. Um, we just, I, I just have to say this because we, uh, the last size available was a 41 size, and this lady required a 39 size. And this was the reef prosthesis of the DPU. This we fixed. This is another x-ray that you would probably not see. Wherein the entire head is rotated. And 
of course the, the, no such there is no way you can try to fix this we did a, a th at that point of time this is a gray area i leave you thinking i leave you the stage thinking what to do for this area this is a patient with a discharging sinus this was his x-ray possible possible lesion in the proximal femoral metaphysis this is how he broke and he has come to us in the hospital ward what to do i do not know thank you very much for your kind attention floor is open for discussion